Paul and Silas sing the hits from prison. Put the shackles on my feet so I can dance. I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. Born through a party in the county jail. The prison band was there and they began to wait. The band was jumping and the joint began to swing. You should have heard those knocked out jailbirds sing that hits from the bad boys of first century Judaism are a must-have for a Jesus lover's dream collection. Prison shaking savior, you got chains. He's a chain breaker. They'll be getting out of jail in no time, so don't wait. Order your copy today. Hey guys, last week on Condo with Kids Online, we talked about Paul and Silas locked up in prison. They were the perfect examples of being joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. So I gave the kids a challenge to make a diorama of Paul and Silas, and I want you to see them. And we're live. Sorry about that click in your ears. We're actually really excited that you're with us today. I was, it's Palm Sunday. I didn't have any palms obeying our stay-at-home order. I did not go and purchase palms yesterday. Um, but you know what I was thinking about? Next week is Easter Sunday, and we're trying to figure out, like, what are we going to do on Easter Sunday? Is Easter canceled? And it hit me. Uh, literally every power in hell tried to cancel Easter 2,000 years ago. Uh, unsuccessful. Easter is not canceled. It wasn't canceled 2,000 years ago. It is not canceled next week as well. Uh, it will look different, but it is by, by no means is it canceled. So we're excited today. So we're going to spend a little bit of time in worship. Jason and Laura are back today with us. Um, Father, would you be with us? Uh, we give this time to you. We give our hearts to you. Uh, faithful in prayer, patient in affliction, joyful in hope. That is us today. Lord, I pray for everybody watching right now in their homes, uh, wherever you are at work. Uh, Nick in North Korea, or sorry, South Korea. Whoops, wrong Korea. Um, <laughs> Lord, be with Nick as he's recovering over there. For our brothers and sisters all around the world, uh, be with them all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I give you glory. For all you've brought me through And now I'm ready For whatever you want to do I'm moving forward To follow after you And now I'm ready For whatever you want to do Your presence 
presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never season your grace has been enough yeah and I'm believing the best is yet to come oh, the cross before me my hope on things above and in you Jesus the best is yet to come your presence, come on. Your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Yes, we do, yeah. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like Um, moment in your living room right now is this opportunity for us to uh, partake of communion together, um, something we normally do as a church every Sunday. Today, uh, we're going to, maybe it'll feel a little bit like it would normally on a Sunday. Um, Jason uh, and Ian Esklin, Ian, if you're watching, know that we're praying uh, you and Peggy for your uh, in-laws in, in New York and New Jersey that are recovering right now from covid um, they just finished the song on, it's basically in Psalm 91 set to music. And I've been seeing that all over the place. Uh, Dean and Kim LaRocca, you guys are making Psalm 91 signs for people to put in your yard. They didn't know any of this when they started this song. So as they're, uh, this is brand new. This is what we call like fresh manna, like fresh off of the, the presses of heaven, this song. So as they're singing this song today, 
Um, Psalm 91, what a great thing to be have sung over us while we're partaking of communion today. So wherever you are in your home, if you don't have the communion elements with you, if you don't even have the right communion elements, just grab whatever you've got, some Gatorade and some Cheetos for all I care, but something that you can take and uh, be reminded. So as Jason and Laura are singing this over you today, you take the time uh, and the moment and uh, to have that moment of communion, communion, common union with God. Have that communion with God today through that. Thanks. Terrors may come in the night. Poisonous arrows may fly. But darkness may steal the day. A thousand may fall at my side. Ten thousand more to my right But I won't be afraid No, no All because He loves me I can call on His name I'm safe in the shadow Of the Almighty all because he loves me and all because he loves me his fortress is for the weak his wings they are covering me he is my hiding place The Lord Most High command His angels will lift up my hands And guard me on my way All because and all Because He loves me And I can call on His name Well, I'm safe in the shadow of the Almighty all because He loves me and all because He loves me oh my shelter my refuge I trust in His name and my rescue salvation for all my days my shelter my shelter my refuge i trust in his name my rescue salvation for all my days oh for all my days and all because he loves me and I can call on His name, oh, when I'm safe in the shadow of the Almighty. And all because He loves me, oh, all because He loves me. Sing, I'm safe in the shadow. Well, I'm safe in the shadow of the Almighty And all because He loves me Yes, He does We are safe in You You're surrounding us Sing this Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. And that is who you are. And that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Sing it out. And that is who you are. And that is who you are. And 
That is who you are. That is who you are. Sing this and fill your house. Waymaker, sing with the sounds here. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Oh, yeah. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Just one more time, say Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. One last time, sing it out. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. so thankful for your word today and this beautiful time of worship that we could come together, Lord. I'm just so at peace, Lord, just hearing the promises that you've given us, Lord. And I just ask, Lord God, that you meet us, continue to meet us, Lord, right where we are, Lord. Remind us of your truth and your word, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to gather as families both in our homes and, Lord, I just imagine all of our conduit family all around the Nashville area and all around the world, Lord God. Lord, I just thank you for meeting us in our place, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that our hearts would be open to receive from you, Lord, that we would be open to a new way, Lord, to receive from you, that we would set aside those um, preconceived things of how we think we need to receive from you, Lord, and that we can just come to you with open hearts and open minds. In Jesus' name. Um, it's been a wild week, hasn't it? <laughs> oh, but in the middle of all the wild, like, God is still, like, still moving, like, still doing stuff. We were at... Um, I mean, if you haven't driven by our church facility in a while, and especially like, I don't know, like if you're Steve and Cynthia in Saudi Arabia, you haven't driven by like in a while. But like progress is still happening here in our building right now. Um, like they're still moving dirt. And it's just kind of reminded that even when uh, the song we just sang, even when I don't see him, you're working. Uh, even when we don't see it, there's work happening here that is building a foundation for a building. But he's doing some stuff right now in the kingdom of God that is building a foundation for us uh, I keep coming back to it. it's go time, right? A grow time for go time. This is a grow time for us, but it won't be a grow time forever because this will not last forever. We will have, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end to this. And we're going to be ready at that point as a church family to, to go. Uh, just this past week, uh, if you were there at our drive-in praise and worship at, um, we, what we call it, park and praise. How about that? Somebody brand that so we can actually. Uh, <laughs> we went to Place of Hope and brought hope uh, to our brothers and sisters there. And if anybody's watching there today in Columbia, know that we love you and we're, we're thinking about you. That happened like literally last week. At the same time, because of the generosity that y'all have shown, we've been able to continue to help our brothers and sisters in Haiti this week, uh, in, in Uganda this week. Um, and we're just really believing God that what's happening around the world, as unsettling as it is, I don't know if Pete, Shindy, if you're still watching, um, in India right now, know that, man, we see you, and we know that it's grow time there for go time as well. Uh, as a church family, we are not going to shrink back. Um, right. History has shown Christians don't run from darkness. Uh, we run to the darkness. We are not running from the gates of hell. We're running to the gates right. of hell. The gates of hell won't prevail is a defensive language of hell, not a defensive language of us. And I wanted to share with you real quick, and you're going to see this now in a video uh, from our friends in North Africa. But the generosity that you guys have shown already allow to uh, happen what's happening right now in North Africa. Generosity six months ago is actually growing right now in response in North Africa. And by the way, generosity that you're able to show us today will be planted in the ground that will show results for days, months, and years to come. We thank you for trusting us to be the conduit of your generosity. I'm always blown away uh, at the radical generosity of you guys, and you're just letting the Holy Spirit 
lead you in that way. Um, obviously, if you're old school and you need to do a check, I mean, again, I don't even know where my checkbook is, but if you do, you can drop it off here at 1642 Lewisburg Pike. Just slide it under the door. Uh, but for the rest, if you want to, you can right now, conduitchurch.com. Um, go online and set, and if you're not on automated, I think most of us are actually on automated. I know we're on automated, but if you're not on automated, maybe set that up so that it's coming out. And obviously those of you that are uh, struggling right now because your jobs have ended, because you're on hold and furlough, man, know that God still loves you even if you can't give money. Just hear me say that that those threats of the devourer being rebuked, that's all old covenant stuff. So you don't have to worry about that for fear at all. Know that God sees you and we see you. There's no pressure from us at all. But for those of us who are blessed to still have an income during this season, you can do that at conduitchurch.com. And we're so thankful that you're continuing to do that. We're building this war chest that we can use not only in Haiti, but actually right here in our own backyard. And you're going to start hearing the stories in the days and the weeks to come of what's happening there. This story that I'm about to show you, this is a video I can't can't say their names because it's online and their government is smart enough. They're out there Googling and looking and listening for specific names. So I'm just going to say North Africa and I'm going to say Jim and Karen. Okay. Or how about Jim and Pam? We'll do Jim and Pam. All right. Uh, This is Jim and Pam in North Africa. When you hear the Hot Coals Project, that is a uh, project that we funded months back of um, I say this right, of people who have a similar faith background to the place they're going that is not a Jesus faith, okay, that have come to Jesus are now in this new place. Man, this is more confusing than I meant it to be. Um, people from sub-Saharan Africa are in North Africa right now. They have experience reaching to this group of people that are lost and, and need Jesus and are not necessarily waving him in. This is absolutely illegal in this area, but they're there right now. We're calling it the Hot Coals Project, which is from uh, Romans 12. We're going to talk about that actually in a couple weeks, heaping hot coals of kindness on their heads. So anyway, that's what you're about to see. Jim and Pam from uh, North Africa saying what's happening uh, right now that you made possible. Okay. Hi, Conduit. We're so thankful to connect with you guys. Hey, y'all. Hey, we just wanted to catch you up on what's going on in life here. We are, as I think most of the world, we've been in lockdown for about three weeks. I think, let's see, how, how did it go down? The, um, so the Northwest African country we're in, you guys know which one? Shut down the borders, schools, the whole thing. Had a lot of stranded tourists. U.S. offered some repatriation flights. This all about three weeks ago. It was a gut check for our teams to think, hey, are we, are we really going to stay here? Where we? So all of our teams, you know, we oversee numerous teams here in North Africa. All of our teams here decided to stay, and uh, we're, we're fighting it out. We're fighting it out. We're hanging on to two encouragements, which we wanted to pass on to you, and, and that is that Christ is the hope, that the church is the hope for the world. Christ is the hope for the world, and his church is the hope for the world. And it, with Christ comes his, his presence and his, in his community. His presence comforts us, and the community is the body of Christ, the church. And we can work together to make a difference in this world. So, hey, we're, we're doing great. Uh, our health is fine. We, we feel probably in the same situation that most people are in the world. We can get decent health care. I mean, uh, here anyway. We can get decent health care, but who knows if the system gets overwhelmed. But uh, remember our friend, remember the hot coal thing we had? Uh, well, our friend... Um, our Ethiopian friend came over here and he's stuck with us as well. We can't get any flights. The borders are sealed. We can't, no one can get out for probably three months. So he's a dad with a four-year-old daughter and his name is Abdul Salam. He's an MBB. Uh, and so he's doing great, but would love to get back to see his uh, family. He was supposed to be here for three months and now it looks like it might be six. So anyway, that's fine. I want Dan, Dana's going to share with you a couple of encouragements and some things that are going on. Yeah, so with um, the schools being closed, you know, probably like like a lot of you other moms, I'm homeschooling now, but I'm homeschooling in French Ah! and Arabic, but I don't do much of the Arabic. I just kind of let that slide. (laughs) Um, Anyway, so definitely I felt like, have felt frustration at times a lot, and it's making me just have to call out on God's presence and ask Him for more grace and more peace and more joy all throughout my day. So this whole thing is definitely teaching me how to go to him more. But I think um, for our region, the people that are working with us, we're all feeling this burden and this intense desire to pray. 
Mm. And it's pulling us together like never before, not just our country, but this whole region. Um, and so even though during the day I'm homeschooling, at night often we're on Zoom prayer calls and people from a couple countries down from us are meeting too all together. We're praying. And even just recently one of our, um, one of the, our leaders in Asia woke, ha, woke up in the middle of the night with this burden that we've got to have a 24-hour prayer time. Mm -hmm. So this next week all of us are taking an hour um, that are working together overseas are going to be crying out for just God's move in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. And and even several people here too have had this picture of a tidal wave coming. Mm -hmm. And so we really feel like God is doing something bigger than we could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. Just like in Habakkuk, it says, Look around at the nations. Look and be amazed. For I am doing something in your own day, something you wouldn't believe, even if someone told you about it. God is on the move, and He's using our prayers to do something in our world. And, um, and also out of Psalm 46.10, says, cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Mm -hmm. And we all feel like kind of our hands are tied. We can't mm -hmm. do a whole lot, but we can pray. And God's going to get all the glory, and He's going to show up in dreams like never before. We, we just really believe this is a day of visitation. And so we're calling out for an awakening in this part of the world and all over the world. Um, and so the people would return to Jesus, a turn, return to their Father, Father God. And so we're excited to see what God's going to do. Um, and at the same time, things are getting more and more desperate outside of our doors. I mean, people in this nation, they're not very wealthy, and many of them are not going to have bread soon. So we're also just talking about how, how are we going to practically be able to sacrifice and give to those who don't have anything. So be praying with us that we'll have wisdom to know how we can be the hands and feet of Jesus in this time. Um, even though we can't do much, but just even, I don't know, just that God would give us wisdom. Um, yeah. And then just to also help us, we are doing a lot of Nerf gun wars in the evenings too when we're not in prayer meetings. So anyway, just... Our kids are enjoying that. So anyway, love you guys. Bye-bye. So you thought you had a bad homeschooling in just English? How about Arabic and French, right? Like, um, I didn't actually put that out there so you'd feel like inadequate. I just wanted you to know that someone who could homeschool in English and in French still feels inadequate with it because we all are at some point or some way or another we are. And so anyway, I just, as you're thinking about Jim and Pam, um, and what's happening in North Africa, know that uh, God is up to something. They're praying all around the world, like literally right now in North Africa, right now in India, right now, uh, every, almost every closet and corner of the world, we're all praying for the exact same thing. And, and I shared it in my video and I shared it in our email, but I got to tell you, that kind of unity, I think God does amazing things. See, I don't know if in history that's ever happened. The entire church, in the, literally around the world, everybody praying against the same enemy, praying to the same God at the same time. Imagine what one little church in the book of Acts did when they prayed in unity like that. And imagine what would happen. I don't know. I'm excited to think what God might be up to right now around the world because of what's happening in places like that. And speaking of prayer, if you're watching right now and you would like us to pray at the end of this, uh, we're going to pray by name. We want to know what you need and how you're praying. And obviously, as you're seeing those comments fall in there, feel free to pray with those that are putting the comments in. But know that as you're putting those in, we are going to pray for you at the end of this. And then one more thing, could you do this for us? You talk about vision and planting seeds for the future. The one thing we can do that is amazing is our own influence. And your influence is when I hit share on this video, I know that sounds so cheesy, but I'm hitting share. I'm literally using that influence that God has given me and I'm stewarding it to tell others. Uh, and I think this message that God has is something that um, I know that it affected me as the Lord was speaking it to me. And so I pray that it'll affect you as well. And I believe it'll affect those around you. So hit share on that uh, and, and turn to your Bibles right now. If you've got your Bibles with you, I hope you do, sitting on your lap, would you turn to the book of Romans chapter 12? By the way, that's pretty much what you're going to hear uh, for at least the next few weeks, uh, Romans chapter 12. Um, this week, though, I just want to read specifically verse 12. Um, and feel free to read the whole chapter or whatever, but uh, Romans 12, 12, uh, we've been talking about it. Joey's been having your kids memorize it. 
but be joyful in hope, which we talked about the first week. Be joyful in hope. Be patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. Um, And faithful in prayer is what we're going to talk about today. Remember last week, submit to the chaos. This week, faithful in prayer. Um, Would I hope that in the end of the time that we have together today, when this time is over, that you and I uh, will walk out not only with a prayer life, (laughs) which would be great, but with a prayer life that isn't a burden. Because you read, you hear this, you think, uh, I, I feel like I know what's happening. Some of you are like, okay, that's great. I've already got a great prayer life. I pray every day uh, for 30 minutes. I pray every day 45 minutes. Some of you are thinking, well, I pretty much suck at this, so I should check out because I suck at prayer. Um, and I want you to know that on both sides of the spectrum that I hope by the time we end today that you leave with a grace word from Jesus that you feel more freedom, more fulfillment, whether you're praying every day or you're praying on no days, that both you can walk out with a prayer life that is full of fulfillment and full of uh, the grace of God and honestly just the gift of God, that that kind of prayer. If that's what you want and you think that's what I really need right now, then hang on because that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's pray. Jesus, would you give us supernatural peace today? And talking about prayer, that's what you, faithful in prayer, Lord. We're praying right now. We want to be faithful in prayer. And Lord, would you do that in our lives and in our hearts today? In Jesus' name, we love you so much. Uh, Just take a moment, even in silence. (laughs) We don't think of silence as prayer. We think of it as talking But in those moments, you still speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know if you're like uh, the rest of the world, but I would assume most of us are. And that is when you get in trouble, when something goes really, really, really bad, that's when you uh, really, really pray. Like, pray, pray. And when you think about that, there's a a moment of guilt and shame that sort of come around something like that because I'm not a very good prayer because I only pray when I'm in trouble. Uh, The first time I can remember doing that was in third grade when, um, based upon the uh, poor decision-making abilities of my older brother, who I think might be watching, um, I ended up getting lost in third grade, like lost. Uh, The kind of lost where they're calling out people to try to find me kind of lost. And I remember, I literally remember, I don't know how old you are in third grade. What is that, like eight or 10 or something? Uh, I was walking through this field. I got split, like the thorns in my legs. And I'm praying, crying, praying, God, if you get me out of this, I will serve you for the rest of my life. <laughs> third grade. I don't even know where that comes from at third grade. And I, looking back in life, know that that wasn't the first, like, it was the first time I can remember praying it, but it certainly wasn't the last time. I can remember praying it when we were uh, involved in litigation, something I didn't do wrong, but we were sued for it. I can remember doing it. Finances were tight, and we were about to lose a bunch of money on a, I guess I can say, Cademan's call show. God bless you guys. Uh, praying God. We, I, but every time something bad would go happen in our lives, that sort of drives us to our knees, and there's some shame around that. But this thing that Paul wrote here, this Romans 12 I think faithful in prayer, this kind of prayer is actually crisis prayer, okay? We can absolutely have a sermon about being disciplined in prayer, uh, committed to prayer, daily prayer, whatever, but this is not the verse for that. That's not this verse, and here's why I believe that. Romans was written in AD 58, and if you guys watch the Expedition Unknown, if you watch all those history shows, you know that in AD 54, a new emperor came into Rome, and his name was uh, Nero. And this dude was 17 years old. I mean, uh, my daughter is 18 right now, but I'm trying to think of my daughter tomorrow is the president of the United States. By the way, my daughter would rock at that. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but there's a lot of weight and a lot of pressure on it. And in that culture, that was the world that Paul is writing this. Nero uh, was in a culture where in Rome, by the way, they were very tolerant to all religions. They were a polyistic the- uh, society. So if you were any other religion, they were tolerant of that, which is why they were so successful in their Uh, conquering because they would allow local religions to exist. But let me tell you the one religion that they were not tolerant to, Christianity. It was was not a polytheistic religion. So here you got a culture that was tolerant to all religions except for Christianity. And then in just a few years from when this is written, the patient in affliction, joyful in hope, right? Um, The city of Rome is going to burn down. And 
what is going to happen is Nero will blame the Christians for this fire. Um, the way that they were at that point, the Christians were very poor. They lived in a ghetto of like uh, Rome. There weren't even that many of them, but that's where they were. And the city burned. A lot of people died. A lot of stuff was lost. And so Nero decided, hey, let's blame. We're not going to blame us. Let's blame the Christians because they're, they've got open fires. The way that they live is poor people. It's their fault. And by the way, in, by that time, AD 64, that's when Peter was crucified upside down. That's when Paul, who wrote these very words, was going to be beheaded because this madman was blaming Christians for something that they didn't do so a society that was tolerant to all religions but Christianity, a society that is blaming Christianity for their woes and the people dying. And by the way, just this last week, New York Times story, the religious right. This is a quote from the New York Times. The religious rights hostility to science is crippling our coronavirus response. 100 percent. That is what that said. And it is a piece that was 100% Christian phobia. I mean, it was a piece that was blaming. Uh, there's a couple of guys, women, whatever, doing this and saying that we're all this now because of that. So society being blamed, like you as Christians right now, evangelical Christianity being blamed for what is happening and people dying. I, I only say that to say that that's not new. That's just a trick that's been around for 2,000 years. That's Satan. And in a few weeks, by the way, we'll actually get to see, okay, what do we do with that? And Paul says here, bless those who curse you, feed your enemies, love your enemies. So we have an opportunity and we're going to talk about that. But I wanted to share that, that this is be faithful in prayer was to a church that was under attack, that was uh, afraid, that was uncertain, that didn't know about their financial future. So if you feel like that's us, then these are words that were written 2000 years ago to that church that I think are relevant for us in our church today. Now, that said, what does it mean to be faithful in prayer, in a crisis moment like this. I want you to notice something. Um, if you've got, uh, depending what version of the Bible you have, uh, that word is either going to be translated as faithful, which is the New International Version. It might be, if you've got a King James, I know you uh, international fundamentalist uh, people, you've got that King James. It says uh, instant in prayer. Um, the New King James uh, is, says continuing in prayer. New American Standard says devoted to prayer. Why are there so many words for that? Uh, because the word in Greek, uh, proskartareo. Okay, now I'm impressing you with my Greek language. But the only reason I'm doing that is but that is a word that we just don't have a word for. And it encompasses uh, lots of things that only one word we're trying to do. They do it in one word in Greek. We're trying to do it with multiple words. All four of these words, I think, are words that grab an element of that one word. And so I want to cover each of those words, and I want to build uh, each of those as a wall. If my house will be a house of prayer, Jesus says, then uh, these four walls, you are the temple of the Spirit, the temple of the Holy Spirit, the house. That means we're to be houses of prayer. I think these four walls are the walls of that house of prayer to you. So let's start with that. We're going to do devoted. We're going to do instant continuing and faithful, those four things, and we're going to hit them pretty fast. You can obviously go back to them, but let's start with devoted. Devoted in prayer. That's Romans 12, 12. It's uh, the New American Standard Version, but notice what it does not say. It does not say devoted to prayer. Now, there are other passages that may say that, sure, but that's not this. In a crisis, devoted in prayer because the devotion, so I'm, uh, I'm married to Shannon, okay? I've been married 25 years. I am devoted to Shannon, okay? But I'm devoted to Shannon in marriage, okay? Marriage is the vehicle in which I show devotion to Shannon. Does, it, does that make sense? Prayer is not what I'm devoted to. I'm devoted to the one I'm praying to. And the, the vehicle in which I show that devotion is prayer, and when it comes from that kind of a relationship, it makes it a whole lot easier than I'm just getting up in the morning and I've just got to do this right and I've got to make it right and I've got to do the right prayer, the right words, the right... That's, that's what it feels like. Which, by the way, Jesus in Matthew 6, the Lord's Prayer that we're all super familiar with, uh, he actually says, don't pray like the pagans. When you pray, don't pray like the pagans who say all these nice words, they're all flowery and they're negotiating, they're saying, and be like this. And he says... Our Father. Like, be like a child when you pray. So, in that, he actually gives us two kinds of prayer. Pagan prayer and paternal prayer. The type of prayer to a father. 
Pagan prayer is very simple. I'm saying these words, I'm saying them right, and because of that and because I'm doing it right, I deserve an answer. Like, I'm negotiating to God. And because I've done it right, then God has to answer me, not based on his work towards me, but on my work towards him. Uh, it's a negotiation. It's, it, it's a, if it was pagan prayer, okay, this is secular, it's irreligious. If I have a job, I get a paycheck. That is not an answer to prayer. That is a, a fulfillment of the agreement. Do you, that's what a pagan prayer is. And by the way, that was the prayer I prayed in third grade, wandering around in the woods, like in the soul of who we are, God, I don't deserve to be rescued. I don't. But if you do, for some reason, then I will earn that rescue by, uh, by praying right and by praying now and by serving you the rest of my life. That's pagan prayer. But the paternal prayer, the Our Father prayer, is so different. Um, in Romans 8, just a few chapters before this, Paul actually talks about what a, what a paternal prayer would look like. And so famous, you know this passage, Romans 8 verse 15. Uh, he talks about that we're the children of God in verse 14. We've, res we've received this spirit of adoption that we're literally brothers with Jesus and God is our Father. And because of that, we cry out, Abba, Father. It's the, it's the prayer of a little, not even a child, a little child. Which is why, I, go through the Lord's Prayer and think of it as a little child. Give us this day our daily bread. For those of you that have littles, um, actually, for those of us that have teenagers, uh, when they are hungry, do they say, hey, dad, what's for lunch on Thursday? Hey, dad, what are we going to have even tomorrow? No, they come into the room and they say, I'm hungry. <laughs> like, I'm hungry, dad. I'm hungry, mom. And daily bread, it's not even give us our weekly bread, our monthly bread, our tomorrow bread, our daily bread. Is, that's the kind of prayer that a child would pray. That I'm not worried about tomorrow. That I am praying right now for what's happening in front of me as a child. And man, there is something about that. The reason the word devotion matters here is devotion is actually a term of love and endearment. Um, if you see uh, an obituary, I know that's sort of a hard thing to say right now in the climate we're in. But when you see that, what do they say about like a mom or a, she's a devoted mother, a, a devoted husband? What they're saying is that they're devoted. They love them. It's not about their duty. It's about their love towards that person. That's why devoted to prayer, it's one wall of this. It's not about the duty of getting it right. It's about the devotion of receiving that relationship with him. It's why uh, I love in 1 John 3, verse 1, behold that he would call us the children of God. Um, if you got a paycheck this week, did you say, behold, I got paid for the hours that I worked in the agreement that I negotiated? No, it's because it's what you expected from it. Uh, if, if you uh, live in a house where you're renting from it and you, you pay your rent and you say, behold, I get to live in this house yet another month. Like there's this excitement from it. It's not that at all because it's the negotiation. It's the agreement. It's a pagan relationship. It is a business relationship. It is purely transactional and not relational. If you don't have a behold in your relationship with God, then your prayer life becomes so much more difficult. It becomes so much more of a burden. This past week, everybody's going online, and I was watching some Jimmy Fallon from home. And, and what was happening with Jimmy Fallon? His kids are crawling all over him. My favorite podcast, uh, Radio Lab, the, the, the host, he's uh, recording from home and his kid comes walking in the room, little kid saying, Dad, I need the password for Netflix. Like how many times have we heard that? But, but here's why that matters, because in a devoted relationship, a love relationship, you understand Muslims would not pray this way. They're super uncomfortable with that kind of prayer because they think God is great. God is amazing. We could never approach him that way. But understand the Bible is full of that language too. Uh, mountain, uh, Mount Sinai, the fire coming down, take off your shoes, you're on holy ground, you can't even stand in my presence. The Bible is full of that language of a great God. But what Jesus is saying here in Our Father, what Paul is saying is devoted in prayer, is who could go into a king's bedroom in the middle of the night for a glass of water and not get killed for it? His son, his daughter. Who could go into Jimmy Kimmel's uh, live, I mean, millions of people are watching. You don't see his neighbor coming in there looking for the password to Netflix, but his children do. 
And Jimmy's not mad at them. He's not angry at them because they're his children. Devoted to prayer. That's the idea of it. I'm not devoted to prayer. I'm devoted in this relationship with my father, his relationship to me. And so that I can say, give us this day our daily bread. I can cry out. That's the word. Like cry out, Abba. Um, I heard Tim Keller once say that Abba doesn't just mean daddy. It's almost like a dada, mama, like one of those little words that you say. It's a little child kind of word. That's the devotion. The next wall, instant in prayer. That's the King James one, ready in prayer. It's the idea of if you've gone into prayer just so you could talk, okay, then you've only got maybe half of it right. Because instant also means about this readiness. So that word in Greek actually has a word of devotion, but also an instant uh, a readiness to it. When Paul tells Timothy uh, to be instant in season and out, that's that word. I'm, I'm ready for it. Um, this word is used also in uh, Mark chapter 3, verse 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You can go there later. But that word is used again when Jesus, remember when we were in Israel, for those of you that were there with us, and we were on Galilee, and it's, uh, there's a moment where John the Baptist had just been beheaded. Jesus' cousin had died. And he was ministering to people on the Sea of Galilee, but he was trying to go to pray somewhere. But the, the crowds kept pressing him towards the sea, and they're like, we're, we can't keep praying for people. But he says here in Mark chapter 3, verse 9, because the crowd, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready, and that is that word, to be ready, to be instant for him. In prayer, the devoted prayer to our Father is a prayer of like, I'm ready for you to whatever it is you're going to do today. There's something awesome coming my way. Because when that boat was ready, that boat became a vessel for Jesus to do the ministry that he wanted to do. He only got in the boat not to get away, but he got in the boat so he could continue to do what he meant to do. Crowds around the world right now, there's all kinds of discomfort, all kinds of fear, all kinds of uncertainty and danger. And Jesus is looking for a vessel that he can get in that is ready to do, to continue the ministry to the people that need it. To be instant in prayer is to be ready in prayer. Not to pray instantly. I want to pray right now instant. That's not what it's saying. It's not instant to pray. It's instant ready in prayer for him. Devoted to him. Instant and ready for him. And then the, uh, the old King James. Oh, King James. Continuing in prayer. That's a word that you see Acts 1 verse 14, they were all together, uh, I think King James, in one accord, whatever, but they were continuing in prayer. Not continuing to pray, but continuing in their relationship with him to, uh, uh, in prayer. So my, continue to follow him in prayer. That's the promise that he's giving us here. And I think that as we are praying for him right now, again, all around the world, everybody's praying for the same thing. Now, in a pagan prayer, in a business transactional prayer, when I don't get what I ask for, so if you're a a, a lessee and you have written your letter to the landlord of things you need done and it doesn't get done, then you and your relationship with that landlord does not continue. You're not continuing in it. If how many of you, some of you already, maybe you're doing it right now, but you've worked for someone and you didn't get paid. Like you don't continue in that relationship, right? That's Continuing is a relationship that in in the pagan way is if I get what I ask for, then I am going to continue in this relationship. And in this prayer that we're praying to the world right now, the world is praying, God, take away COVID-19. And if he does or he doesn't, is not because I prayed good enough or not. It's because it's his will. When your kids are little, again, and they don't get what they ask for, now, they might throw a fit. Of course, my children would never do that, ever. But yours might. <laughs> it doesn't c- cut off their relationship with you. The relationship isn't severed. They're continuing. They might be mad. They might be sad. They might be. But here's what we, when, uh, with our father, like, you might not have got the answer to the prayer that you wanted. But it doesn't cut off your relationship if you're a child. Because faith in this moment says, I would, uh, I would, this is what I would ask for if I knew everything that you knew, Father. That's what I'm getting. So that if I didn't get what I asked for, it's because I didn't know what you know. So I don't know what God is doing. I'm continuing to pray like a child. God, please take this away. 
And then in faith saying, but whatever it is you're going to do, God, I trust and I'm going to continue in that relationship because I'm trusting you. I'm continuing in you and I'm showing that in my in my prayer. Do you see how prayer is so different like this? Like there's no guilt or shame. The world is falling apart. We're all coming to our knees in unity. I know that moves the heart of God, but I'm doing it out of a devotion because I love my father. And if I'm not doing it because of that, then I don't want to learn how to pray harder. I want to learn how my relationship with him as a child and then pray out of that. Uh, I want to be uh, instant and ready in that prayer uh, because he needs us. He's partnering with us. And so in prayer, I'm going to listen and, and hear. This is a whole different way to pray, isn't it? And then I want to be, uh, I want to continue on in that prayer, in my relationship with him in that praying. And by the way, can I just give you a uh, I don't know, pro tip. Let me tell you what I've been doing in my prayer life in the past few months even, and it's really come in handy here. Uh, When I come into a moment where I'm going to pray, I'll actually pull my journal out and I will write down, okay, what am I angry about today? I learned this from Pete Cesaro. I've learned it from uh, Chip Dodd. Like, what am I angry about today? Like, what am I feeling anger around? I'm feeling anger around the media being crazy. Uh, I'm sad. I'm sad for the people whose lives are being lost right now. I'm, I'm afraid of the uncertainty. And by the way, that changes every day. But here's why that I think is important. First of all, if you think that's super weird, go read the book of Psalms and then come back to me and tell me that that's weird. But that's, here's what that does. I'm checking in with God. I'm taking that to him. And when you hear words like Paul, like prevailing in prayer, that's a word he, or travailing, I'm sorry, in prayer. It's like him sorrowful. And, and by the way, if you're in another culture besides the West, like we're super stoic here. We think that feelings are something that we need to overcome and defeat as opposed to a, something that God has given us to deal with life on life's terms. They're not saying that in Haiti. If you want to know how somebody feels in Haiti, uh, you don't have to ask because they're about to show you. Um, that's true in most countries around the world, but that's not true of us. And so that's to me is just a little uh, a pro tip because it allows me then to be ready because uh, I'm like, okay, now I know where I am. And now I know that if I'm, if I'm sad for the people whose lives are lost, if I'm sad for those who are, don't have a relationship with him, that I'm travailing in prayer uh, for them. It's not about me just making some like a uh, show of my prayer pagan style. It's about me saying, I genuinely feel this. I genuinely am sad for this. I'm genuinely scared of this. And God, I'm taking it to you and giving it to you. That's just the way that I've prayed and it's worked for me. But the last thing is faithful. This is the last wall, so to speak, of this house of prayer. Faithful in prayer. Not faithful to pray. Faithful in prayer. Again, if I go back to the relationship of my wife, I am faithful not to my marriage. I'm faithful to Shannon. The vehicle of marriage is how I choose to show it. Uh, And by the way, this word is uh, used in the book of Acts chapter 8, verse 13. When Simon the sorcerer has believed and he is baptized, it uh, says that he began to, it says followed. uh, This is the word that's used here in chapter 8, verse 13. Simon followed Philip everywhere. That's that same word. Paracaratereo, whatever, how I said it, uh, is the Greek. It's the idea of I follow Shannon everywhere. She doesn't move to College Grove and I stay back here. I'm following her where she goes. We have, uh, we have a couple of, well, we have three dogs in our house, which is don't, I do not recommend, by the way. Um, we have one dog named Samson who prays like a pagan, okay? He wants something in exchange for what he gets. If, uh, if he's hanging out with me on the deck, let me tell you what Samson wants is toast, not me. Okay. He is looking for breakfast, and the minute I've taken the last bite of food, he is a fair weather friend. He is gone. Okay. That is not a faithful dog. Okay. That is a pagan dog. Now, we have a faithful dog named Bear, and Bear follows you everywhere. Not to get anything, just to be near you. And when it says faithful in prayer, I, that's a picture of that in our lives, that going to prayer is me being faithful in prayer to be close to God. And I'm going to say this. The only reason I could do this, the only reason anybody should be faithful to God, devoted to God, instant, all those, is because of his faithfulness to us. It's a weird thought to think that in the same way that we can use prayer as our vehicle to connect with him, that he uses prayer as a vehicle to connect 
with us. Jesus prayed for his disciples. He prayed, one of my favorite prayers, Father, as you have loved me, now love them. That's a mind-blowing idea. Imagine how much he loves Jesus. And he loves you like that. It's his prayer that is his vehicle to us. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's his faithfulness, not mine. We just, Psalm 91, his faithfulness is our shield and our rampart. It's his faithfulness. It's not how good I can pray. I, I wish because then I could make some rules and then obey them, but that's not that. It's about this relationship. His faithfulness to me is why I can then out of that be faithful even to him. And it's not about, because you might be thinking, okay, Darren, but I'm not faithful to him right now. I've not been faithful. And that's such a common thing. And I bet if you were sitting and said it out loud, someone next to you would say, oh yeah, that's totally right. That's me too. And it's okay because it was never about your faithfulness to him. It was always about his faithfulness to you. And from his faithfulness to us, out of that, then I can literally, because of his faithfulness to me, uh, I can pray to him in a way that's not about getting something out of him anymore. But it's about the, not me pegging and, and negotiating that even if I'm unfaithful, that he is faithful, that he is my sword, he is my shield, that his faithfulness is my rampart, it's my protection, not my faithfulness, not my ability to pray, but the work that he did for us Man, that's a gift. And the reason that we can know that and we can trust it, because if you're going to be devoted to somebody, if you're going to be instant and ready and continuing in them, uh, faithful to them, this is not about a blind trust. This is about the work that he did for you. It's funny because even pagans repent of sins, right? You could watch that, just watch the news, all the apology videos that came out this last year in the Me Too movement. Tons of people who didn't know Christ were apologizing, right? They were repenting. They repent of their sins. Even they repent of their sins. Only Christians repent not only of our sins, but even of our righteousness. Because in my righteousness of me trying to pray good enough, in my righteousness of me trying to do this right enough, even that is me trying to get into heaven, is me trying to get into a relationship with God based on my faithfulness and not on his faithfulness. And I love what he's done in my heart. I pray that he'll do it in your heart. And if you're watching right now and the world is upside down and you're really tired of trying to win this thing, you're just tired because it's not working out. If you put your faith in science, by the way, I'm sorry about that. Uh, not that I'm anti-science, I totally believe in science, but let me tell you what science has accomplished right now. A, uh, a virus that only kills less than 1% of its people that it's infected is shut down the world, okay? If your hope is in government, that's not a place because the government can't defeat this. If your hope is in Jesus, however, because Jesus isn't here to save us from a virus, he's here to save us from our sins. He's here to say that this world I'm going to make new, this world I'm going to change and transform, and I want to change and transform you at the same time. That's who we're devoted to. Sure, we can find medicine. I'm praying that they find that medicine. I'm absolutely, and I believe that they will. Science has done a lot of good things, but the one thing science can't do, the one thing the government cannot do, is save you from your sins, to restore that relationship with God to you. You are his child, if you go back through Romans 1, we're not automatically born as that, right? We're born into sin. In Romans 3, right, it tells us all of sin falling short of the glory of God. And in chapter 6 of Romans, it tells us that we're, there's this giant thing. I can't get back to God. And, uh, and I love it because you get into Romans 8, 9, 10. It's called the Romans road. That the way that I get into that restoration, into that, is that I receive the forgiveness that Jesus offered me because of his sacrifice, because of his faithfulness that I am now received as a child. And because I'm a child of God, that's why I can pray this way. And you can as well. I want to pray for you right now. If you're watching wherever you are and you say, I don't have that relationship, I want you to have it and I want you to have it right now. And I want to pray for you. And as I'm praying for you, you pray. I don't care if you're in India or if you are in Indiana, but you can pray right where you're sitting to receive Christ, to receive that work, to confess, Romans 10, to believe with your heart, to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that he died, that he resurrected to pay for your sins. Just pray that. You think, Darren, I didn't pray it right. 
I got good news, Roman 8. He's praying for you already. The Holy Spirit prays on your behalf. So, and if you do that, I want you to email us, info at conduitchurch.com, and we want to pray for you. Someone can reach out to you. Someone can either call or email however you want. But as I'm praying this and you pray that, then email us. Heavenly Father, for those that are watching at home right now, I pray that you are uh, reaching through their screens and into their hearts to them. For those that have not called upon your name, for those who have not trusted the receiving work of Jesus, would you give it to us this morning? Give it to them this morning. That they are no longer a pagan negotiating for prayer for what they deserve or what they don't deserve. Lord, know that you, (laughs) that you love them so much that you want them to be your son, your daughter. Wow, what a promise. We pray that that's happening in their hearts right now. And Lord, for those of us that have been believers and we've been praying like a pagan, would you forgive us of that? We repent of that and we come in not as a pagan with a negotiation. We come in as children crying, Abba, Father, Daddy, I'm hungry. Daddy, what what are you going to do today, Dad? I'm ready right now. That prayer is the prayer that we pray today. It's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Joel has been getting your prayer requests off of, uh, off of the internet. And we want to pray for those by name right now. Can I tell you a story? I told you about I was lost and I was praying, and God, would you help me? That even that imperfect prayer that God heard, I wandered through the woods with my thorns and stickers and bleeding, and I find an old farmhouse, and I knock on the door, and this little old lady, she's with, I'm sure she's with Jesus now, and I actually can't wait to meet her someday, answers the door, and she was just about to leave, literally about to walk out the door. If I'd been there five minutes later, she'd have been gone. And she says, oh, son, I'm just getting ready to go into town. I've got to get my hair done. Um, do people still get their hair done? Fixed. Oh, I'm getting my hair fixed. She's probably home watching her stories for all I know. Uh, gets her hair fixed, but she drives us into town, and she drops me off at the house, and I realized, oh, God, you saved me. And by the way, I immediately just stopped that prayer of negotiation, and I went on a live, like I wanted to live for a while. But God didn't save me that day because I prayed good enough, because I even kept my end of the bargain. He prayed that and saved me that day because that's what fathers do for their children. And I believe he wants to do that for you as we're praying even here today. I wasn't as lost as I thought. It wasn't as far gone as I believed. And God was way bigger than I understood. And I remember getting that ice cold Coca-Cola. I remember she called it Coca-Cola. Would you like a Coca-Cola? It was the best Coca-Cola I've ever had. Uh, So wherever you are, I know that he is uh, with you. We want to pray for you by name today. I want to, um, I got to get out my old man glasses because I'll have a big enough text here. Do you, do you guys feel led to pray at all? I'll pray for these by name, but who feels led to pray? I'll pray. Okay. I just have a little something that, I mean, myself, I've struggled a, a lot this week just in my mind and wrestling and up and down, and I kept going back to this scripture Um, And hopefully it'll bring some encouragement to you. But Psalm 62, 1 says, My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him. So, and then another quote that just kept coming to me this week, or it came through my feed, but it says, Prayer is the bridge between a panic attack and peace. So... Cross the bridge. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of that avenue and it can look different. You know, prayer, like Darren was saying, you know, we get hung up sometimes on we can't pray or we don't know the right things to say, but it's just journaling it out, crying before the Lord and our peace and rest comes through him. Cool. So. That's good right there. We want to pray for you guys right now. That's really good. So if you're in struggle right now with that fear, just know that that prayer can bridge that and it mm-hmm. doesn't have to be the right prayer or the perfect prayer, but just one that cries out. So. Jason? Yeah, want to start? Yeah. Hmm. Jesus, we are so... I sit here today and I know that you're real. I know that you hear us. And today, Lord, for our church people, our, our, the people that are actually listening in right now and that are not here in Franklin, Lord, I just pray right now your Holy Spirit would would meet them right where they're at right now because you are present. You're our very present help in time of need, Jesus. You are with us. And I'm just even thinking about y'all right now, wherever you're at, just know that. If you can know that right now, if you can know that right now, that God is with you. The Holy Spirit is alive and is well, and he wants to heal And he wants to work in your life. Even now, he wants to give you a word. He wants to speak to your heart. 
And all you have to do is ask. He's yeah. right there, and he's willing. I, I, actually, I got that right now. He's willing yeah. and able. He's willing. So if you're asking right now, he is willing to respond to you. Just want you to be encouraged with that today. Whatever you're going through, he is willing. And so Jesus, as Darren prays through the, this list of people that need to be encouraged and they need to you know, just know that they are not alone, Holy Spirit, as those words go out, Start working like you only you do, Jesus, yeah. and you're willing to do. We thank wow, you that you are with us, God. We thank you that you're with us. Yeah. Lord, from Tammy Wilczek, we're praying for, yeah, the, the truck drivers, those that are out there on the front lines right now, uh, especially Tom and Lolita uh, from Conduit. Lord, would you be with them? Uh, they're faithfully making deliveries all over the country. That's the reason that we have food in our cupboards is because these people are out on the front lines, and I pray that you'll be with them and all of those that are doing that right now, including those, by the way, working in grocery stores like Doug Phillips, I know for sure, and there are so many others that are on the front lines. My brother Dale, one of them, in Superior, Nebraska, and Shannon McCord at Ideal Market, my teenage job, Lord. <laughs> you be with them as they're providing much-needed food. Lord, for uh, the MRATHs, Lord, would you get Nick home? What a crazy story that he's going to have for his grandkids someday that... Uh, tested not only once but twice for a pandemic disease in Korea. But just get him home. I know his wife and his kids want him, and I know he wants there as well. And for Laura Brown, Lord, for her friend's husband, Joe, dealing with a cancer diagnosis at this time, that's hard. Lord, would you be with them and their family? For Maria, for her son, for Sonia Culver, for her family. Lord, for Stevie Bordeaux, pray, uh, Lord, the anatomy scan ultrasound this week and protection over my wife and baby. They have a baby on the way, and I know they're not alone, Lord. The departees, Allison and Nick, uh, so many others that are, babies are coming, Lord. Uh, that's uncertain, and if you're a new mother, Lord, I know that's a scary time, but we pray that that prayer today would be the bridge for them from panic to peace, from panic to peace promises. Ah, and Lord, for our church, for our family, for those that are here and those that are around the world, I pray that you would be with them, that you would work on their behalf, that, oh Lord, that this is not the uh, end for us. Lord, this is a grow time for go time. That word that seems so cheesy, it's just the right word for us right now, that we are getting ready to launch into what you have for us, Father. I pray for our church, uh, fellow churches in Middle Tennessee and around the world. Lord, I'm thinking of Steve Berger at, at Grace Chapel, Mark Rampula at Southview. I'm thinking of Charlie Weir at Gateway. Uh, Lord, for Nick across the street at Graceland Assembly of God. Lord, so many churches even right here in our own community. Lord, whatever the media wants to say about us, who cares? We bless them. We don't curse them. But we will put our heads down and do exactly what you've called us to do, which is to, Lord, to be joyful in hope, to be patient in affliction, and to be faithful, devoted, instant, continuing in our relationship with you in prayer even today, especially today. Lord, one more uh, for our people that are working right now that nobody can see because the cameras are not pointed at them. So much is happening behind the scenes that have made this happen. Uh, they may, <laughs> nobody's seeing them on a camera, Lord, but you are seeing them yeah. and know them and are working on their behalf even today. Thank you for that. We love you, Jesus. We thank you. It's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, I hope that you walk away from your TVs today with not a burden to pray as much as the freedom to pray, the fulfillment that you can get in a relationship with your Heavenly Father. Pray our Father. It's not just a word. Today, you can be faithful to Him in prayer. Um, know that as this next week comes, we're going to have an Easter online Easter service this week. Um, we're going to do a uh, Moms You Can Thank. I think this was Mo's idea, but thank Mo for this. If you want to get a picture of your family dressed up this week, we're going to do a little Sunday Best contest next week so that you can uh, hashtag Sunday Best. So here's why. You get dressed up in your little Easter stuff, and that way you get a picture of your family, and you can say it's to win gift cards. Now, Laura said that what she's going to do is save the money for Easter dresses and buy patio furniture instead. <laughs> Whatever you got to do. If you want a picture from you and the patio furniture that you bought from the money you saved from Easter dresses, then by all means, enjoy the patio furniture. 
We love you guys. Know that the peace that passes understanding is yours. This season will pass, but Jesus won't pass. This season won't last, but Jesus is the same today, tomorrow, yesterday, forever. His words will not pass away. That's a promise for us today. We love you guys. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.